is Kathy McGivern and I'm Ms. Artastic and my friend, welcome back. So we're gonna be talking five Arctic animal art ideas for your classroom in this episode. All of course using choice-based strategies as that is my theme for this, well, the 2021-2022 school year. Well, because, you know, things gotta be a little bit flexible and the best opportunity and way to do that and implement that in a classroom is through choice-based. Choice-based learning, we're going for it. All right, so let's dive on in to this episode. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Arctic animals can be easily integrated in art in a choice-based way um, really easily. So learning about the Arctic can be made interdisciplinary with social studies, with your language arts program, and even by including some visual art in there. So in this episode, I'm gonna be providing again those five choice-based ideas for creating visual art using the theme, the Arctic. So the first idea is that you could do portraits of Arctic animals, and my friend, I'm so excited about this one. Okay, so don't worry. I got some super cool, engaging ideas to go along with this. So one of my first ideas is that students can be given the opportunity to either research in books or online Arctic animals, and you, of course, might already be doing this in another subject, and you just want to extend your teachings with an art lesson. Perfect, add this to your unit. So you're gonna have students research and make a list of different Arctic animals. It would be similar to doing different field sketches where they find an an image of an animal they like, do a quick sketch of it, then write its name above or below as a label. So what a fabulous way to also talk about sketch noting or even nonfiction text features. So you can, as you're teaching art, if you're just a general art, a general teacher, or even as the art teacher, you could be introducing other lessons or connections to other subjects as well. Just so that way we're giving students the opportunity to see how things connect in new ways. Um, so. Next, they should choose one animal. So of their field sketches, they should choose one animal that stood out to them or that they felt a connection with and should turn it into an artwork. Students can be given the opportunity to photocopy or print off a reference image, then can be given a selection of art mediums to use to create a portrait of an Arctic animal. And here is your extension. Make it interdisciplinary by asking them to research and write about their animal, or they could even make a video about like, you know, talking it and reading out their script after they create. So they could even do like an infomercial. You can have them write a fictional story about their animal, or they could do a nonfiction article. So you can just like let that like totally run. Like I'm already saying, as I said that, I'm starting to think, well, if it's fiction, they could do like a movie. Or maybe they could do like a little uh, comic strip or cartoon or graphic novel. Or maybe it could become a nonfiction article. It could be an infomercial, whatever. Like you could go so far. Okay, so next is Arctic animals in a landscape. You're going to allow students an opportunity to research both Arctic animals online and again in books. And you're also going to have them look up and research Arctic landscapes. So I'm gonna have them select one animal to make an artwork of. You're gonna have students print off one animal picture and one Arctic landscape image. Students will then use use these as their reference images to help them design an artwork of an Arctic animal in an Arctic landscape. So you can do this with any age, but you can level it up or level down your expectations, right? So for primaries, you can explore this with wax crayons and temper paint cakes for resist painting techniques or let them choose an art medium from their pencil box. And then with elementary students, you can let them make a choice between watercolor paints or oil pastels or soft pastels just to see what magic will happen and push them away from like conventional 
art mediums to encourage creativity. Then with your middle school age school students or your high school students, they can be asked to do larger scale artworks, maybe even collage or ink drawings or acrylic paintings. You can really just up the level of complexity with them. Okay, so that's kind of my thinking on that. And again, you can take this in any direction and make it as big or as small as you'd like. Depends on um, what's going on in the world. It depends on how much time you have. It depends on if you just want this to be an exploration or a whole unit or whatever. Make it as big or as small as you would like. Okay, so next is immersive Arctic art experience. My friend, you're gonna love it. Okay, so on YouTube, search up Arctic Tundra or Arctic Animal Video, something Arctic-y. Um, and then you're gonna mute the video, okay? So then you're gonna also play your own playlist of music, something like a soft play playlist or like yoga music or like Zen music, something soft and like no words. And you're gonna have that playing either in another uh, tab on your internet or in your um, favorite music player like Spotify or whatever you listen to your music on. And so you're going to have audio from something different, the video from YouTube of the Arctic. That is the idea. I don't want to hear, so it could even be a documentary, but we don't want to listen to it, right? We want to just have the um, atmosphere without the audio. The audio needs to be like something neutral. Again, soft yoga music, Zen music, whatever. Cafe music. That's always cool too. Okay, so then you're gonna play that and then you're gonna stick your projector far away against a wall or in a corner and then you're gonna try shining it around the room and you're not gonna shine it onto the screen. You're gonna shine it on onto the whole room or onto the floor or one of the walls or multiple walls um, onto the ceiling. Basically, we're trying to make the Van Gogh artwork immersive ex museum experience, right? You know when you've seen images or maybe you've gone to a Van Gogh immersive experience at a museum and you got to see projected images. I think that's what it is. I've never been, but it looks like they're projecting images of artworks that are of his that are moving onto the walls. And that's kind of what the vibe I'm going for. So you're just taking your projector and just projecting it everywhere. And of course, you know, the kids are gonna be super engaged with that. <laughs> okay. Gotta change things up sometimes, right? They're not gonna expect it. Don't even tell them what's gonna happen. They're just gonna show up and there's just gonna be things everywhere. And it's obviously gonna look kind of weird because it's being projected at a weird scale, but who cares? They'll be excited nonetheless. You'll be like, it's Arctic day, Arctic day. Anyway, um, so what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so now before you even invite the kids in, okay. You're gonna print off, so you're gonna prep. This is part of your prep is to find all this stuff, set it up on your computer. Um, but you're also gonna prep some animal pics. So you're gonna pick, print off like five to seven different images of Arctic animals and then photocopy that so that there's enough. Okay, don't go find 30 different pictures. I mean, you can, but that's a lot of work to me. So um, just like print off like five or seven. They will just be so excited anyways, they probably won't realize there's only five or seven <laughs> different ones. Or they'll just be happy and that this is even happening. So you can just print up five or seven, it will only take you a couple seconds, and then just photocopy those multiple times. So there's enough for all your students. Okay, so now you're gonna go hide them around the room like an Easter egg hunt, but it's an Arctic animal hunt, like they're actually going out there to find animals to draw in the field. <laughs> That's the whole inspiration of this. I'm trying to bring the outdoors in, right? like real photographers going out there, National Geographic, looking for animals to photograph, sitting out there in the cold probably for days on end. Oh, what a job. Anyway, um, so that's what we're trying to recreate for engagement purposes, immersive experience. Um, and like, I mean, these kids are never gonna forget this lesson. Okay, so now you're gonna go hide them, right? You're gonna go hide them around the room, on the floors, on chairs. Under tables, and when I mean under tables, you could put it on the floor under the table, or like you could tape it under the table. Oh my gosh. Imagine when the kids, especially those little guys, when they notice that, they're gonna lose it. They're gonna lose their minds. Uh, yeah. Anywho, so that's gonna happen. And then you're gonna invite, so now that it's all set up, right? Your Arctic animals are like hiding. 
You could even like cut up some paper snowflakes. I don't care if it's summer <laughs> where you are. <laughs> but you could <laughs> even have snowflakes hanging, paper snowflakes hanging in the room. I mean, you can go as big or small with this as you want. Like realistically, you could do it low prep and it would take you like very little time, 15 minutes, honestly, if you ran to <laughs> go stick your projector on and then print off pictures and photocopy and just shove them wherever really fast. Um, that's cool. Or if you want to go crazy town, you can go crazy town. It's really up to you. Anywho, so now you're gonna invite your students to walk around and find an Arctic animal. And once they find one, they gotta sit quietly with their animal, right? They gotta be artists observing nature. And they're gonna sit there with that animal. They're gonna look at it for a while. Don't, don't ask them to draw it. Just say, just look at your animal. Keep an eye on it. Watch what it's doing. Just don't just pretend that you don't even think it's paper. <laughs> just act as though it's real. <laughs> just look at it. Stare at it. What's it doing? Is it moving? <laughs> Where's it walking to? Like, just go on a big adventure with that one. Anyways, and then um, once you've got their attention, and finally, you're going to start drawing your voice quieter. Okay, we got to be quiet because we don't want to scare the animals. So we're not going to say anything. And we're just going to carefully get out our paper and we're going to draw it with a choice medium, okay? So you're just going to bring it down slowly. We don't want to scare the animals. That's why we got to be quiet. <laughs> and you can just let them make art and you can give them choice mediums on a piece of paper. Maybe it's even colored paper, like maybe it's cool colored paper to match the Arctic, like green and blue and purple, whatever. I mean, like how cute and engaging is this? All right, moving on. Okay, so if you really want to stir up the pot, here we go. Black and white Arctic animal art. So you can have students choose an arctic animal and make black and white art inspired by the animal with their choice of medium. So black and white means that you get to pull out graphite sticks and charcoal, India ink, watercolor paint, or even allow digital art making. And you can use this prompt as a means of pushing your older students out of their comfort levels, right? Um, it's going to be a lot more challenging just to use one pigment, right? So if you're using India ink, they're going to be required to do a lot of diluting and mix, pre-mixing different values, all kinds of things, right? So I'm thinking older students. So by older, I mean upper elementary, middle school, definitely high school. Um, you can have fun themes with them still, even in high school, but then you could be still introducing some choice-based ideas. Again, this is one of them, right? So you can pull out and encourage them and challenge them to make black and white art. And this is, again, use this opportunity to really just push them out of their comfort level, immerse into new horizons and possibilities of art mediums and techniques. And finally, my idea is Arctic animal sculptures, of course. So you can let students pick again your arc, their own arctic animal and make a sculpture and they can make a sculpture big, they can do it small, tiny, it depends on what you would like and how much time you all have um, in your classroom that at that time that you're doing this, right? Like sculptures, you always think, oh, every project has to be huge and beautiful and masterful. Not always, like you could do um, miniature explorations, right? It could be small, little explorations just to... Um, as an introduction to material. So instead of, you know, typically often we are doing pinch pots in ceramics, um, for instance, as an introductory art lesson to the medium, but you could always do something else like this. So for instance, if you're, you can introduce clay, like air dry clay, ceramics, cardboard building, wire sculptures, or even paper mache. And when I think of wire sculptures, I'm really like in my mind picturing some Alexander Calder style. You can know his circus, his little flea circus, but it could be um, done with Arctic animals. And my advice is to use baling wire, um, not with primaries. Hello, uh, let's do some high school. <laughs> I've done it with high school. It was super cool. Um, we made a big circus that was, these guys are probably uh, almost 30 now. Yep, I think I was, I was at the very beginning of my career. Anywho, um, so that was a while ago. What am I talking about? I don't even know. Oh yeah, 
paper mache, whatever. So you can, you could do it as an exploration for any of those mediums could be done as an exploration if you make it small or you can make it big and make it an impactful artwork. It's up to you. And now here's your extension for all of these is you can always talk about and bring in climate change and the effects on any of these beautiful creatures if we continue to allow this world to get rather warm. I don't know about you, but where I'm living, it's been a kind of a crazy 2021 due to climate change. I live in a rainforest and not like the tropical kind, like the I live in British Columbia kind. It just rains. <laughs> and so, and by rains, I mean like 10 months of the year. It just rains all the time. And anyway, this summer we had a heat dome and it was 40 degrees Celsius, which I'm sure in a desert that's like normal, but we, that is not normal here. And then like a whole town burnt up in like 15 minutes. And I'm not exaggerating. Um, and then we, a few weeks ago had massive, um, rain events beyond normal rain for here. We have, more, we have rain events, but this was like all kinds of crazy. And we have been living through floods now we're having super snowstorms, and that's not normal here. Uh, anyways, my whole point is, is that there's clearly something going on, and I think that we really need to uh, really evaluate our actions. And as educators, I think this is also an extension, especially with your older kids or even younger ones, we can talk about, like, what's going to happen to these animals if where they live melts? <sighs> and how can we, like, maybe make some changes to what we're at, at we're doing as a global community global community not individuals not certain countries but as a whole planet what could we be doing more because something needs to be done and that's not i mean it isn't my opinion but also i mean it's reality <laughs> anyway i'm misertastic Kathleen McGivern. Um, if you need to find some Arctic animal art lessons that are fully planned and ready to go, please make sure that you head on over to my Teachers Pay Teacher store. I have a whole Arctic animal uh, section. You can find these lessons on the blog post show notes. I will link to it in the description of this podcast episode. And again, I am Kathleen McGivern, Ms. Artastic, signing out.